Hello, my name is Jennifer, and on this video, I'm going to show you how to find the domain of a rational expression. So grab a pencil and some paper and work through these problems with me. Let's take a look at this example. We have 5 over x minus 4. We're going to find the domain of this expression. The domain is all of the possible answers that x could be that still makes this problem a true statement. Okay, for example, x could be 5. If x was 5, this problem would have a value of 5 over 5 minus 4, which is 5 over 1, which is a 5 whole number. So we could say that 5 is a possible number in the domain of x. It's a possible answer for x. So we could go through this long process of finding all of the possible answers that would make this statement true, or we could find the value of x that would make this entire problem not true. For example, when you're dealing with fractions, if the bottom value of the fraction is equal to zero, that fraction is called undefined. For example, if we had 5 divided by 0, that's impossible. That's called undefined. You cannot take the number 5 and divide it into 0 groups. So if we want to find the domain of 5 over x minus 4, we could say it's all of the real numbers except the one number that makes the denominator have a value of zero. So here's how we're going to solve this problem. We're going to take our denominator, x minus 4, and we're going to set the denominator equal to zero. We're going to solve this linear equation by adding 4 to both sides. And that will give us x equals 4. So let me tell you what that means. For our domain, for this rational expression, we could say the domain is all real numbers except x equals 4. So here's how we'll write our answer. We'll say all real numbers. The symbol for real numbers is this double R. We'll put a little semicolon or, co or comma and say x cannot or does not equal 4. So the domain of this fraction is all real numbers, but x cannot equal 4. Okay, let's try another one. Let's find the domain of the rational expression 10 over x plus 6. The easiest thing to do is to set the denominator, x plus 6, equal to 0. This will help us find what value, when that value is x, would make the denominator equal 0. I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. x equals negative 6. What this means is if x was negative 6, this value of the denominator would equal 0. If the denominator was 0, this entire problem would be undefined. So the domain of this problem, we could say, is all real numbers, except x cannot equal negative 6. Okay, let's try another example. Take a look at this rational expression. We have x squared over x squared plus 3x minus 10. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to set that bottom equation, we're going to set it equal to 0 because we want to find the value that would make this bottom equal 0. Okay. 
Okay, notice that this one has an x squared. It's really, it's like a complete trinomial. Before we can solve for zero, we need to factor this trinomial. We'll put our x's in place, and we need two numbers that multiply to negative 10 and add to positive 3. We'll be a plus 5 and a negative 2. And all of that still equals 0. Now, according to, so we have our multiplication problem, which is what we factored. According to the property, the 0 property, Either the x plus 5 side could equal 0, or the x minus 2 side could equal 0. If the x plus 5 would equal 0, 0 times this value is still going to be 0 and vice versa. So here's how we're going to find the two numbers that cannot be part of our domain. We'll say x plus 5 equals 0. And we'll set x minus 2 equals 0. We'll solve these two problems. Over here we have x equals negative 5. And here we have x equals 2. So for this problem, there's two values that if these two values were used for x, this problem would be undefined. So our domain for this problem is all real numbers except x cannot equal negative 5 and x cannot equal 2. Okay, let's look at one more problem together. The rational expression x squared minus 4 over 3. Now notice that there's no variable in the denominator. What this means, if this happens, is that there's all possible real numbers could be a value of x. Because there's not an x variable in the denominator, it doesn't matter um, what the x value is because it will never be in the denominator. And so 3 will always remain in the denominator. So there'll never be a situation where we're dividing by a zero, which would make it undefined. So for a problem like this, where you only have a constant in the denominator, you can mark that it will be all real numbers. If you have any other questions about finding the domains, please contact your professor or stop by the math tutoring lab or watch this video again.